Thanks very much for the introduction. Sorry for all the acronyms there. There are a lot of uh, acronyms in that I realized after the fact. So today I'm gonna to be talking about our web-based ICOM viewer that we've been uh, working on really hard the last year or so, as well as a little bit about our image analysis toolbox. And I'm hoping to do a live demo, fingers crossed. I've got a backup video in case something goes wrong. So QIPCM is part of the imaging program for OICRAO, and we're an imaging core lab with the tools, infrastructure, and support services for multi-center clinical trials. Um, we also spent a lot of time and resources building a really robust regulatory framework to ensure that all our trials and projects meet all the quality and regulatory standards. So this is an image, this is our original QIPCM infrastructure that we've had for years. And if you were at my uh, talk back in, I think it was last November, I presented on some of the work we were doing for NETS and I would have had this figure up. And our platform basically allows trialists to de-identify and centralize imaging data from multiple participating centers and securely, and then allow secure access to that. So on the left, we have images being sent in through our anonymizer script, going through QC, and then going to our PACs. And on the right, we have our external investigators logging into our virtual desktop infrastructure to then see their images. So what we found over the years is that there are several challenges with this VM-based architecture. Uh, one of the main ones is the high cost to both support and maintain these virtual desktops. The virtual desktops obviously run on real physical servers, which cost a lot of money. Um, there's a lot of IT support required for them as well as software. Um, and this results in high cost to us, which of course ends up being high cost to our users. Another major issue we've identified is just in terms of our customers' overall satisfaction. We did customer surveys um, with some of our customers, and a lot of them found that the login procedure was just overly complicated. Uh, we're using a two-factor authentication, much like a lot of places, but because of the fact that our users are only connecting to it once every few months, um, and they only might use it for an hour, they're often at risk of forgetting passwords or PIN codes. So the simpler it is, the better. Um, and there's also the need to install software to connect to those VMs. So they have to use the VMware Horizon client. Um, another problem with this has become firewalls. Um, so firewalls at a lot of our institutions are getting more and more restrictive um, as a result of data breaches and all these different issues that have happened at hospitals, even just the push to get our PHI more secure. Um, so more and more of these are getting locked down, which blocks some outbound connections. And finally, the third reason we've looked at is that many of our trials really just don't need a full VM-based architecture. They could get by with something much more basic. Um, so that could be a web viewer or something else. So that's what we started looking at. Um, so over a year ago, we started investigating using a lightweight web viewer. Um, but the first thing we needed to do was make sure that would actually be acceptable to UHN security and privacy. So we started those conversations a year ago and got the initial green light saying, yeah, as long as you follow the right security protocols, in theory, it should work. So we selected a number of key opinion leaders from our user base, mostly radiation oncologists and radiologists. Um, and we came up with a survey and then we started looking through the requirements they had for a web viewer for their DICOM imaging. Um, so first and foremost, it needed to be simple. A lot of them used the example of a bank login and I said, well, it it's, shouldn't be any, need to be any more secure than a bank. And the bank, I just log in and they text me a pin. So yours should be fine with that, right? And we said, yeah, okay, sure. Um, that seems reasonable. Um, it should work from any computer. So no, none, no restrictions with firewalls or anything like that. Um, and it should have an intuitive layout. So they wanted something that they didn't need to learn a whole other um, imaging software all over again. We also had some functional requirements from some of our users. Um, things in the way of contouring tools. They wanted to be able to do some at least basic contouring on these images. Um, and then we had a lot of nuclear med focus um, just from our trials. So they wanted to see things like PET CT overlaid um, or SUV calculation. And finally, there, was, there were a few of them that did say that they would like to see RT plan review, uh, but they did stress this would be kind of a nice to have knowing that having RT plan review on a web viewer might be a little complicated. So with our requirements set, we started looking at different options, both paid and open source. And one thing that really quickly came to the forefront was OHIP. So OHIP is developed by the NCI and funded by them as well. And it met a lot of our requirements for radiological image reviewer right out of the box. Um, there were a few 
imaging uh, or a few requirements it didn't quite meet. But the fact that it's so extensive allowed us to develop our own features for that. For example, PET CT overlay wasn't something supported. Um, the other benefits of it are being a fully web-based application. We don't need any kind of software installed on users' desktops, which is great. Um, and a nice thing about this application as with some others is that the rendering is all done client side, which means scalability won't be an issue because the processing doesn't require multiple high powered servers on our end and the images can be viewed, viewed locally and rendered there. Um, one of our goals with adapting OHIP will be to basically keep up to date with the most recent releases of OHIP, um, test them on our own software QA and then only launch them once internally to our users once we're happy with them and they've passed all their QA. Um, and OHIP is starting to get used a lot. Um, you'll hear about it anytime you go to any of our, the major imaging symposiums or even, um, what was I, where did I see this at uh, last? I think at Comp I've seen it viewed. So ultimately, a lot of different groups are starting to use OHIP, which is great because because it's an open source community, you want as many people using it as possible. Um, so that that uh, code base keeps moving up and becoming and staying fresh. So our main focus when making OHIP available to our external users was also making the access as easy as possible while being extremely secure. Um, so instead of reinventing the wheel, we built this version upon UHN's own multi-factor authentication sign-in. Um, but to do this, we had to go through quite a few hoops with UHN privacy. Um, so we did a full security audit of our system. You can see our nice little A plus report card we eventually got. We didn't get that the first time. We obviously had to go back and forth and make sure we, we got everything in a row. Um, and this allowed us to get through the UHN firewall and have our web, website exported. They're not exposed, exported, exposed. Um, in terms of our own for clinical trial based um, security, we also needed to add a few different protocols. One of those things is to have automatic idle logout. So if the user's logged in for too long, it logs them back out. Um, user permissions um, based on access to their trials. So this means if someone logs into the system, they can only see their own trials images and not all the trial images. Um, but we could still have the flexibility to be able to add multiple trials to a user. And then finally, we have full audit logging of everything, which is very important from a an REB and security permissions issue. So we can see exactly who has accessed what images on what date when. And there's no expiry on this, it just keeps on cycling over. So we can look at any given date and time, look at who accessed what images and vice versa. So as I pointed out before, this was our original system diagram. Um, and now it looks more like this. So we still have our, the, the left side of the diagram is not changed. Um, users are still anonymizing their images, sending them through for image QC and into our packs. But on the right side, we now have two pathways for our users to access their images. So they can still access virtual desktops. And there are a lot of users who still need this for standalone applications and, that, and the like, or if they're developing their own applications. Uh, but a lot of them can now use the DICOM web viewer. And the other thing that changed is our feature extraction became the QIPCM toolbox. Um, so I'll just briefly talk about that a little bit. Uh, before I go into the live demo of the web viewer. Um, so the QIPCM toolbox is a set of tools and pipelines developed to facilitate the QA and analysis for some of our trials as they get larger and larger and larger. Um, and the first version of this toolbox was released last fall, and we're working on version 1.1, which we actually hope to release any day now. Um, these tools at the moment are available just locally. Um, so within QIPCM. So we're mostly using these for our own internal users to go through trials, but our hope is to add this soon um, to make this available for external users. So one of the major use cases we have is for clinical, Im clinical packed image query and retrieval. So this would be where we would query clinical packs and pull down a bulk retrieval for a trial. Um, and the thing that's great about ours is that we can actually filter it through right down to the series level. So for example, if they only need axial images, we don't need to get all the different MIPS and coronals and sagittals that have all been created for a patient. So when you're pulling down 20,000 patients' images, it makes a big difference if we're only pulling down one series for each as opposed to five um, for both speed and the amount of total storage. Another thing we have is our QA. Um, so that's our QA and QC. So in the case of metadata QA, we allows us to do a deep dive into the metadata of the DICOMs and look through those DICOMs to try to pick out the ones we want to incorporate in our study. 
So in this case, on the right, we're querying a, not a full study, but a small a subset of it. And we're looking at the slice thickness used. And we might say, okay, well, we don't like any patients having a slice thickness of five millimeters, that's too big, and crop those out of our selection. So we don't actually use those for radiomics processing, um, which is the next thing we have on our list. So with radiomics processing, we streamline the radiomics processing pipeline. We have, um, we're using pyradiomics, um, which is a pretty commonly used platform. And we can basically go through our packs, find all the different RT structs, query that up, and then send them through for analysis. And then we get all the different lovely features that come out of that, which we can then export to our users who are doing that research. Um, these are some of the trials that we're using the toolbox for. Uh, mostly they are just trials using radiomics. So the ones using radiomics will basically come in, we'll anonymize the images for them. They'll come in, use one of our VMs to do their contouring, and then they'll send them off to our toolbox where we process all the radiomics features for them. We have started using this as well for large volume collection. The last one listed here is Altus, which is a small AI, local AI startup. Um, and in collaboration with the JDMI AI department, we've been able to actually go through and pull down images from over, I think we have 23,000 patients for one and 12,000 patients for another. So we've been able to actually pull down all of these image sets um, and anonymize them and make them available internally to that startup for their analysis. All right, so now I'm gonna go into the live demo of the web viewer. So I'm gonna leave this. Everyone still see my screen, I assume, I think so. Looks like I'm still sharing. Yeah, yeah we so, can see your incognito. Okay, so all we need to do is go to technoimaging.uhn.ca and it will load this up and maximize this. And just to point out, I'm actually not on VPN right now. So I'm just on my home internet right now. And this, so this is how it would appear to any user. Um, so we'll log in with our UHN credentials and this takes us to the UHN login screen. I'm gonna pick one of our demo users. And then I'm actually gonna text myself and this will seem like the longest five seconds ever as we wait for this text to come in. Um, And we're in. So very similar to a bank login, right? That's about how that works. So our users are pretty happy with that right now. It's much simpler than our old VM login. And then this is what um, the OHIP viewer, when branded as our own with our own changes, looks like. So it's a pretty straightforward layout. You can see we've added this trial option because we need to be able to sort through different trials. In this case, the one user we have is that it only has access to this one data set. And this data set is actually a data set pulled down from PCIA. So if we launch that data set, it'll pull it up. And then we see we have a pretty simple just radiomics, or not radiomics, the radiological viewer. So we can scroll through the image sets. We can change the window and level. So anything like that. It has presets for window and level in case you're doing a study where you always keep them the same. It also has some interesting features. I think this one's kind of cool where you can actually do ROI based window and leveling. So if you're doing some lung, lung imaging, that works pretty well. Um, you can zoom in and out, very basic things. It's not, this isn't a tool designed for people who are gonna be doing massive imaging research on their images right away. That's not, it's not designed for that. This is a way for our external users who don't need those tools, who just need to come in, do a quick persist measurement. That's definitely something you can do. Um, longest, shortest axis, that kind of thing, no problem. But it's not meant, it's not going to replace using really high end software, things like Slicer and that, because um, it, it doesn't have that capability. But it should help us to bring in some of our more, our lower use, and not lower use, but the user is just using it uh, as a viewer on its own. There's other basic tools, you can obviously do just length. The contouring tools are quite basic um, in terms of an ellipse, that kind of thing. Um, we can also look through the DICOM tags of the images. That's all available to the user if they do want to go through and see slice thickness, that kind of thing. That information is all here. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to sign out of this one, and I'm going to log in with a different one that has pet images. 
And I can show you some of the extensibility that we've added to the trial. Once again, I'll get my new text message for this user. Once again, I didn't mention this last time, actually, we have a disclaimer. This is just to make sure that pe people understand they're using their images for um, their only their trial image purpose. Um, they can only do what is allowed within their own REB approvals, et cetera. And they can't download the images. There's no real way to download the images, but it's just stating they can't do it. Um, so we got a different trial here. I'm gonna open up a PET CT image from this one. So same basic thing. Um, it's the same viewer. I haven't opened a different viewer. It's just a different patient. Um, so I'll just show some other functionality that you can see with the pet. So one of the nice things, this is built-in functionality, um, is to have a MIP, which is a nice function. We can rotate around it, which is pretty cool. And we can use that to identify lesions. So now we can see there's huge mass of disease here, but I think we'll, we'll go and look for this one. Um, this other lesion in there, I guess that's the right one. So exit the NPR. And then what we've got, we've, this is the function that we have added. We've added this PET CT overlay function. So when we do that, we can get the PET and the CT overlay in the same image. So this wasn't something that was inherently available in OHIF, but due to the extensibility, we were able to add it. We can change our window and level to so make my PET look PET and the CT spray scale. Now we can scroll through the image. I'll actually zoom in so it's a little bigger. Let's see if we can find that lung lesion you're just looking at. So it looks like it was right about there. Um, we can, oops, can look at it in a little more. We might want to change our window and level a bit to try to enhance that guy. Maybe it'll change the color scale to something that makes it a little easier to see. That's better. Um, and then we can contour it. We can see our max SCD basically. So these, this was also something we've added was the ability to get the max and then SCD values. Um, so that's how that part works. So we're getting, that's the, the pet equivalent values. And let me see, I think that's pretty much everything. Oh yeah, I was, we can swap our primary and secondary in case we want the CT to be the primary and we can do the contrary on the CT instead and get the number of values in Hansfield units. So that's about it in terms of the viewer. Once again, it's a pretty straightforward viewer. It's, um, and we've just been building pieces. So we're looking another thing, like I showed these ROI features are pretty standard. Uh, we wanna make them slightly, uh, more impressive. And the other thing I'll just briefly show, I know I'm running out of time here now, is our trial management. So our trial management, this is, everyone still see this? So, um, so in our trial management, basically we have a UI that makes it really easy for anyone on our team to manage these trials. So we can see, the different trials listed, and we can see what users have access to them. And vice versa, we can see the different users and we can then add different trials to that user, et cetera. Um, so this UI is basically making all the changes on the back end in both Keypoke and our packs. Um, and it's making our lives much easier for all the trialists working under us. So we really like to thank our dev team for that because it really is making our lives easier. Um, so I'll just quickly go back to my slides for our acknowledgements, and then I'll be happy to take any questions. So this is our team. This picture is very out of date at this point because we had a picture scheduled for last March, and you can guess what happened with that. Uh, so we haven't been able to update that since. Um, but just thanks to our whole team, uh, the software development team, primarily in this case, as well as our other team members, physicists, and project manager. And thanks very much, and I'll be happy to take any questions.